Hi everyone, generating functions play very nice with random walks, so I'm going to define random walks in this video. To draw simple random walk, we can start with the integer line z, and then on this integer line there is a walker, and the walker at every time step will either jump to the left by one or to the right by one, and so the right jumps will happen with probability p, and the left jumps will happen with probability q, and again p plus q is 1. Okay, so to formalize this, the input, the random input for this process is xi, iid random variables, with each of them equal to plus 1 or minus 1, independently of each other, with probability p for plus 1 and q for minus 1, where q is 1 minus p. And the position of the walker, so this is the input, the position of the walker, position of the walker after n steps is the sum of these steps. So it's going to be the sum from 1 through n of these xi's. And it's also understood for now that s not is zero. So the walker starts from the origin and at every time step either a plus one or a minus one is added to its position and that results in either a right step or a left step. So that's the, that's the uh, simple random walk on the integer line z. The simple random walk is called symmetric if this is called symmetric if p is one half and therefore q is also one half okay so simple simple symmetric random walk is uh, often abbreviated ssrw where simple random walk is often abbreviated as uh, srw simple random walk okay so uh, <coughs> sometimes we are going to restrict ourselves to symmetric but most often we'll keep this asymmetry for arbitrary p and q parameters, so again if p and q are one half then it's symmetric, otherwise it's asymmetric. What, what we are interested in for these uh, lectures is first the following quantity, define tau plus as the infimum of times, times at least one, when Sn is one the first time, the smallest time, when Sn is 1. This could also be infinite. Could be infinite if level 1 is never hit. Okay? It could be infinite if level 1 is never hit. Otherwise, if uh, level 1 is hit, if the walker at any time steps to position 1, then the first time the walker does that is going to be this tau plus. So the first time where the position of the walker is uh, plus 1, heating time, this is called the heating time of level 1. So this is called the heating time, heating time of level 1, starting from level 0. Okay? And we want to find out about this quantity, this random quantity. And let me show you how to deal with this quantity with generating functions. We're going to start off with uh, we're going to start off with uh, writing up the generating function of this thing. So let's say something about the generating function of this thing. I'm going to call the generating function p plus, so that's the generating function of tau plus, namely expectation of s to the tau plus. And to find this, we're going to do a first step analysis, something we have already seen a couple of times in this unit. So we're going to ask ourselves, what is the expected s to the tau plus, given that the first step is to the left 
times the probability that the first step is to the left, which was Q. Okay, the random walk goes to the left with probability Q, or if you wish, down, minus one, minus one steps, minus one step actually, with probability Q, plus the same thing expected S to the tau plus, given that the first step is to the right. And then the probability of the first step being made to the right is P. Now let's explain, let's, uh, let's figure out what, uh, what the deal is with these quantities. The first step being to the right is easy because if my first step is immediately to the right, then it's exactly the event that I hit level one at time one. So then tau plus is just one. S1 is already one, then the first time when I hit level one is one. So if I go to the right, then I know that under this condition, under this condition, I know that tau plus is equal to one. And that's exactly what this event is. So this is, this is actually the event Let's, let's make it a little bit more precise. This is the event itself that tau plus is one. Okay, first step to the right, if and only if the hitting time of level one is one. So in that case, it's uh, pretty easy what I get here. This is going to be s to the one times p. That's easy. What is much more interesting is what happens when the first step is to the left. So what happens if the, when the walker decides to go one step to the left? Now there are two things happening there. So let's write this out a bit more uh, explicitly. So tau one given the first step is to the left. Is what? So I can, I can say the following. I do step one, I do make one step to the left. So that certainly is one step, one time step added to any time before I can reach level one. And now I find myself on this position here. Now I find myself at position minus one. And from minus one, I still need to reach level plus one. So I'm still looking at how long does it take from minus one to go up to level plus one. What do I need to do? Well, I need to do my random walk and I need to reach level zero back again from minus one. Once I did that, then I need to do my random walk still and I need to reach level one again from zero. So the claim is that to this first left step, to this time that the first left step uh, took, I need to take another tau plus time, another independent tau plus time to reach from level minus one to zero. So I'm going to say that this is tau plus prime, and I'm going to say this is equal in distribution. So this is how long it take to, takes to take a left step and then from level minus one, go back up to level zero again. And once I'm there, I still need to make another right step eventually. I still need to hit level one from the origin which of course has the same distribution as my previous original tau plus time. So the claim is that I can take two independent tau plus prime and tau plus double prime times, which have the same distributions. So it's an independent copy uh, of tau plus. They have the same distribution as, as tau plus. And in order to hit level one after an initial left step, I need to wait tau plus prime time to get back to the origin, and I need to wait an independent and additional tau plus double prime to get back to get to level one from the origin. And so in distribution, tau plus given this first step to the, is, uh, this first step is to the left, is going to be that wasted time for making that first step. And then I need to climb two levels on the ladder. So I need to wait two independent copies of this uh, climbing time, if you wish. And that means that in here, that means that in here, I'm going to see S to the tau plus prime and a one and the tau plus double prime. So let me put the one then to the end of it. 
Okay? And in total, I can continue this line, and I can say that I have now expectation of s to the, okay, let me write the one in front, 1 plus tau prime plus, and tau double prime plus, times q, and s to the 1 times p. So that's the, that's the thing I get. And <coughs> the times tau prime and tau double prime are independent. I have a product of s to the tau prime and s to the tau double prime. So I end up with s times this s to the first power times the expectation of tau prime, s to the tau prime, times the expectation of s to the tau double prime, because these two random variables are independent and s to the tau prime is multiplied with s to the tau double prime. So I end up with expectation of s to the tau prime plus and expectation of s to the tau double prime plus and the factor q and at the end I had sp. Okay, so again this is because tau prime and tau double prime are independent. However, on these, in these terms, I recognize the original generating function. I recognize that tau plus prime and tau, double, uh, tau plus double prime have the same distribution as the original tau plus. They each describe the time needed to climb one step up on the ladder. Okay? And therefore, I can replace these by p plus again, both of them. So I end up with a nice equation, namely sq of the square of p plus plus s little p. And that's an equation for that's an equation for my generating function. So the generating function of the heating time for level one satisfies this uh, quadratic equation. Well, okay, if it does so, then uh, let's solve it. So uh, let me write the equation again. Let me just, yeah, let me just write up everything again. So sq times the generating function square. I'm going to take the left-hand side onto the other side. So I'm going to take p plus of s with a minus. Then I have sp, and in total this is equal to zero. So that's the that's the algebraic equation I end up with. Okay, so let's solve this. Let's solve this. P of s plus minus is uh, one plus minus square root of um, one minus four s square p q. Oops. Uh, this one is a p. This one is a p. Sorry. This one is a p. Okay, it came from s p here. Okay, over two uh, s and q. Okay. Now the question is again, and we have seen this before. We have seen something similar before. The question is again whether I should pick the plus or the minus here. And for small s, uh, the thing should be, it, it's a generating function. So the thing should, uh, should not blow up for small s. If I pick the plus here, then for small s, I have essentially 1 plus 1 over something very small. So that would blow up. So plus won't work. I have to pick the minus. And so one finds, therefore, that the generating function is 1 minus square root of 1 minus 4s squared pq over 2sq. Okay? That's the generating function of, of the heating time of level 1. Okay, so in the next video I'm going to analyze this generating function and we're going to conclude some nice properties of the time itself, the time tau plus itself.